Welcome to the tutorial positioning the scene components. So part of scene setup is positioning your various drawing elements in the camera view. So we're going to primarily do this using the advanced animation tools as well as a transform tool. So as I mentioned before, generally when you use a transform tool, you end up leaving a keyframe. But if you're doing setup, you don't want to key any of your movements um, or transformations. So actually instead of not using the transform tool, what you can do is disable the animate mode, which is this button here. So if you click on it like this and it doesn't look depressed, it's no longer selected, which means that any transformations you make with the transformation tool will not be recorded in a keyframe. So there are several ways to select elements in your scene. The first being with the transform tool in the camera view. So you could select this mountain, for example, or this punching bag. And if you have Animate Pro and you don't like the fact that your element gets shaded over in this pink color, but you do want to keep this red bounding box with the yellow boxes, you simply need to go to the top menu and go to View, Show, B Box Selection Style, and that's the Bounding Box Selection Style. So if you click off and then click it, the punching bag again, you'll notice that it keeps its original color, but the bounding box is still there. Often you'll have something selected in the camera view with the transform tool and you'll want to find it in the timeline view. Well, there's actually a quick and easy way to find it, but for this we need the timeline view toolbar. So let's go get it from Windows, Toolbars, Timeline View. Um, and the button I'm talking about is this, the center on selection button. So if you click on it, um, your element which is highlighted, although sometimes you can't find this highlighted item in a, in a big stack of various elements, um, will be highlighted and brought into view. So not always the top, but somewhere closer to view. Uh, for example, with the mountain, if I do the same thing, um, it's highlighted and then brought somewhere in this region for us to see. You can also do this in the network view. Um, let me just expand this. cameras over there. So we can do this also by using the keyboard shortcut. Uh, actually, I actually have to go back and select an element. You have to select somewhere in the network view here and then use the keyboard shortcut O to center on your selection. And I believe for the timeline that's shift O. So the punching bag is here in the center. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is the tool properties for the transform tool. And as you can see, it shares the same place as the Select tool. So you can toggle back and forth between the two, um, but right now we'd like to see the properties specifically for the Transform tool. Um, so you have the option of making your cursor into either a marquee or a lasso. And then you also have the option of using the peg selection mode. And when you do this, any transformation that you make with the transformation tool will go directly from that drawing onto its peg. So the next two options are two align options. The first one being snap and align. So if you have this selected and you grab your object and you move it around the camera space, you'll start to notice that there are blue lines or boxes that start to appear. And that's the software letting you know that your object is coming close to something, uh, you know, another line um, somewhere in the camera view that it can be aligned to. And the second align button is the snap to grid. And of course, you need a grid for this in order for this to work. So let's go to view, grid view, grid, show grid. Oh, it's already shown. There we go. Um, and then if you grab the same object and you start to pull and drag it, you'll feel that it's being pushed and pulled um, along small increments, and those, of course, are the increments of the grid. The next feature in the Tool Properties panel is the Hide Manipulator Controls. And that's sort of the opposite of what we saw before with the show uh, B-Box selection. If you click on this, you'll notice that although the color, the shading 
of the selected item stayed um, as a pinkish hue, the actual bounding box disappeared. So if you prefer selecting items like this without seeing that line, like you find that line annoying, um, you can always use this feature here. So the next two items we have are the flip horizontal and flip vertical. So the flip horizontal uses the pivot point as the access for where it will flip from. So, and that's the same for the flip vertical. So it's almost as if there's like a dotted line running across from where the pivot is uh, along the object. And that also goes for the rotate 90 degrees and rotate uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. It's really rotating around this pivot point. Um, the options here at the bottom are to do with scale, offset, and rotation. So this is a scale and by default it's unlocked so you can actually scale and skew um, unproportionally. Or if you want to scale proportionally you can always turn on that lock. Um, if you want to change the offset position, so the position of where this object is in the camera view, you can use these arrows for the X value and the Y value. And lastly, you can enter a value for the rotation, and once again, it's rotating around the pivot point. And then, like I said, I mean, I was uh, returning everything to its proper value as I was going along, but you can always reset everything um, by going to animation, uh, reset, or reset all. And in fact, also, if you perform a transformation like this, if we go to the punching bag, um, you can also right click in the timeline and say clear all values and that also resets um, that rotation that was made. So the next thing I want to talk about is locking layers in the timeline view. So the most obvious and easiest way to lock a layer is by clicking on this lock right here on the side and the title of that layer also goes red which is a maybe a clear indication that this layer is locked and this is good for when you're trying to select things in the camera view so you can see everything but the punching bag was selected because the punching bag is not pink and everything else is and everything just got moved except for the punching bag um, and you can also do this by making multiple selections by selecting and shift clicking clicking on the lock button. So I only clicked one lock button, but because these were all selected, it locked a bunch together. And that's the same for the unlock. Then from the menu at the top, so say I have this selected, you can also do multiple selections by going to animation, lock, and so here was a lock and unlock what I showed you with just clicking on the actual lock icon, but you can also do lock all, which locked everything in my timeline. So you actually didn't really need to make a selection there. But it does have to be enabled. So as you may realize, the text um, layer is not enabled. So the one layer that was not enabled it didn't really get affected one way or the other. Um, and then you can do the opposite. You can go animation, lock, unlock all. So it unlocked everything all at once. And the last one is if you select, let's say, these two layers, then you can go animation, lock, lock all others. So it locks everything that isn't selected and it actually did work for the text um, layer even though it wasn't enabled as you see there. So I'll do it one more time, lock, unlock all. So before I go on to show you how you can reposition your drawing element otherwise known as the punching bag in this case, I'm just going to move its drawing pivot to, let's say, around here, where it would swing from. So if you select the transform tool um, and you select your punching bag, you can move it in four ways. You can pan, which means you drag it across. You can rotate, grabbing one of the corners, and you can see that the cursor turns into uh, two curved arrows. And of course, once again, it's rotating from the pivot point. You can scale. Um, if you want to scale proportionally, you can grab the corner here. And you'll see that your cursor turns into a diagonal double-headed arrow. And if you hold on the shift key, you'll scale proportionally. Um, if you 
scale without the shift key, you can scale unproportionally and do sort of like a squash and stretch. And lastly, you can skew, and you skew by grabbing onto the segment between two of the yellow boxes and then sort of pulling it or pushing it up and down uh, like that to skew. So one thing that you can do with the transform tool is that you can temporarily reposition its pivot point. This is probably a good place for the permanent pivot point, but let's say, for example, we want to rotate it from this corner here, or with the transform tool you can grab the pivot point, pull it down to this corner, or let's even say over here, so that this is our new center of rotation like that. And that's for like temporary movements. So for this instant, just to make this one movement, we wanted our pivot point here, but we can see that our permanent pivot point is still visible as a ghost where it was before, and that's right here in sort of this chain area at the top of the punching bag. And if you click off the punching bag and then click back onto it, you'll see that the pivot has repositioned itself. So it keeps that transformation, it keeps the rotation from where the pivot point was, but it'll always snap back to its original position the moment you deselect the object. So now I'm going to show you how to reposition your drawing using the four um, transformation tools from the advanced animation toolbar. I just realized this is taking up a lot of space, so I'll move this up here just so we have a bit more space in the camera view. So we have exactly the same four functions that we did with the transform tool, uh, but sort of broken into four separate buttons. So we have the panning button, we have the rotation, we have the scale, and the skew. This time, however, when you use these tools, you have the option of actually changing the pivot point permanently. So I'll show you what they do without changing the pivot point. So we have that. You know, it, th these ones are kind of neat because you get that sort of indicator of where you're rotating from. And lastly, the skew. But in this case, if I use any of these transformation tools to offset the pivot point, so let's say we want to move it here, I just made a permanent offset from the pivot that was originally set on the drawing. And even though I used the skew tool to move the pivot to this corner, it's now going to be moved for all four of these transformation tools. And so everything I do will now be from this pivot point. So let's move that back. And generally speaking, it's better if you're going to make temporary movements with the pivot that you should use in the transform tool. You would only offset the pivot with the advanced animation tools when setting the pivot for a peg. That peg would essentially control the movements of a group of drawings with their own individual pivot points, such as a school of fish moving together. Each fish drawing would have its own pivot, as would the peg that moves them across the screen together. So I'm just going to reselect the transform tool and then show you another way that you can flip an object. So what we've been seeing so far um, in terms of flipping relative to the pivot, you can select from the animation menu by going to animation flip, flip horizontal, or animation flip, flip vertical. And once again, that's in relation to the pivot. Um, however, if you perform a rotation on your object, so let's rotate our object, our axis has effectively changed. So instead of being a straight vertical axis in relation to the camera view, uh, the camera view's vertical axis, and then the camera view's horizontal axis, the axis is now like an invisible dotted line running parallel to the object. So from here, I would say. Um, so now if I select the transform tool, and I go to the animation menu and say uh, flip, flip scale x, we'll see that it flipped back and forth along that dotted line axis. Still in relation to the pivot, so it flipped sort of along its center, but it wasn't flipping in relationship to the natural x and y axis. And if I undo that, and then we can do it also the other way, animation, flip, flip, scale y, and that's in relation to the pivot, but also with that new axis that's been formed because of the rotation. So let's undo twice. 
So lastly, I'd like to show you how to position an element using the layer properties. So it's pretty much redundant um, with everything I've showed you in terms of the tool properties panel and the animation uh, menu and the animation toolbar. But let's take a look at it anyway because there are some extra features. So if we go to our punching bag in the timeline, the punching bag layer, and we double click on it, the layer properties window opens up and you can see here it's for the punching bag. So this is the main tab that we want to take a look at and that's the transformation tab. So the enable 3D we're going to get into later but we leave it disabled for now. The position you can play with along um, a separate or 3D path so we're going to say separate for now and it's that just moving the position along the X, Y or Z axis of where the punching bag is and this would be back and forwards and forwards in space. You also have the scaling here so you can have it separate or you can lock it. If you enter a value such as 2, it's like you're doubling it in size. Um, you have the rotation once again like that, uh, the skewing and any of this stuff um, that you see a function button for obviously when you start animating you can link it to a function. And then you also have the pivot point, which you can change, such as that. Um, you have two other tabs, but they're not really relevant so much to this tutorial chapter. I think there's just one thing uh, in terms of the horizontal and vertical flipping. If you use this, you're actually flipping in relationship to the camera views X and Y axis. So as you saw, even though the pivot is here, it flipped from the center point of the camera view like that and then vertical flipped it in relationship to where the vertical line would be um, in the camera view. And if you want to know more about those features, I would refer you to the user guide. I think it's around page 498 in the user guide. If you want a detailed account of all three of those tabs um, in the layer properties panel. And then just one last thing, we're going to just go back and reset all so we don't have any of those transformations applied. So that's it for the tutorial positioning the scene components. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, cloning and duplicating layers.